Father, we do bow before you, and Lord, we just stand in awe of you, and just, we love you, your presence, we love your holiness, God. We pray for a greater holiness to come into this room. Lord, I just cry out that you bring in the spirit of the fear of the Lord in this house, God, that you would get our focus. I pray for focus, for sober-mindedness. God, this is an hour that we have to be sober and to put our hearts and our minds and our all completely upon what you want. God, we're in the end times. And God, the spirit of travail shows with it increasing and that being on your heart, we have to have it in the midst of us. And just as it was said, it's the whole body that you want to come into this. And I ask <coughs> that you, Holy Spirit, begin to grip hearts through the proclaiming of this word. God, we make our hearts low before you. It's you that we want to hear from. We want to hear from you, the Spirit of the Lord. You, I, We ask that you attune every ear, every heart, and that we will hear. You will attune our ear and awaken our ear if it's asleep. God, we ask, oh God, for that soberness to recognize the season that we are in. Oh God, and not to miss this day of visitation. Oh God, you want to bring in a greater release of that today. And that's what we cry out, that you release a greater release of travail. Oh God, bring it in people who never even thought it would come. God, we ask that you do what's impossible with us, but what's possible with you. That's the call from the very beginning. And God, we ask that you give revelation, God, not just knowledge, but revelation of what you're doing and what you are saying. Oh God, these are not idle words and that you would take Ken completely out of the way and that you, Holy Spirit, will come and speak through him, that you will just give him the words of life that you want to speak. Even, he's, even though he's made plans, we want you to give that very ream of word and we pray that these words will be a fire. They will be a fire. They will be a sharp sword coming out of his mouth. Oh God, and that it will divide this very soul and spirit of all of us, God. We want it divided. We want you to even begin come to come and begin to cut away the self-life. Oh God, not just the mind, the will, the emotions, but the flesh. Oh God, our self that wants to do what we want to do. And we want you to hit whatever you need to hit, yes, whatever yes, you need Lord. to cut yes, away. Lord. We ask that you move in this house, yes, oh God, with yes. soberness, that you move not by power, nor by might, but by the Spirit of the living God. And Father, whatever is standing in the way, pride, independence, resistance, whatever it might be, I ask that you hit it, that you hit it with your dunamis power. We want to see you glorify your Son in the this house and we want this body to come in corporately into your plan and purpose as you have called us and you have raised us up for such a time as this and we don't want anyone to be lagging behind but we want what you want and I ask that everyone in here agree with me that we want we want what you have called us to and we want to be what you have called us to be we want to be nothing less and we can't do it in our strength and we know it we need you we need you desperately Holy Spirit to come and be we want to open our hearts and our spirits to your ministry today like never before because you want to do a great impartation. And we ask that you come and have your way today. Come and have your way in this house, we ask in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glorify your son. Amen. Amen. Now, aren't you glad that she came up and prayed? Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's good. Thank you. Um, all right. Well, I want to continue uh, our uh, three part or maybe four but three or four part series on uh, on strengthening golden altar prayer that's what we started last week and if you weren't here last week 
Uh, I'm sure you can get the notes and the, also the audio teaching from last week on uh, praying into the spirit of Nimrod. Uh, uh, that was one of the things that Terry had talked to us about. And we did a teaching on that last week. And uh, I'm sure we have CDs out in the bookstore for that. If not, you can uh, ask Jerry and he can get you a, a copy of that. It'd be good if everybody read the notes and everybody listened to the CD on that because that's one of the major areas that we'll be uh, that we will be, we will be praying uh, into as part of our golden altar prayer ministry. We'll be praying into this spirit of Nimrod, which is the spirit, head spirit, lead spirit, demonic spirit over the city of Atlanta. And so we want to pray for that. But we want to continue this series of strengthening golden altar prayer. And I want to talk today uh, and next week, and then we'll see beyond that, but uh, at least this week and next week, on welcoming travailing prayer. Welcoming travail. Well, that's what we want to talk about is the issue of uh, travail. Uh, when Terry was here a few weeks ago, he talked to us in some of the between-time sessions uh, just with leadership. And he talked to us about this spirit of Nimrod, which we talked about last week. And then the other thing that he talked about with us was about travail and the lord's been having it on our heart really for uh, a good while two or three years now actually about the need for it and trying to understand it and facilitate it and those types of things uh, and so we had a really good time on that sunday afternoon and he and donna his wife donna uh, really did a great job of helping us to have greater understanding of it um, uh, because, uh, you know, just to be honest, I don't really have too much experience in the area, uh, but I know we need it. And, uh, and so that's what we want to talk about is we want to talk about welcoming it and, uh, and understanding it. And today I want to talk about, in addition to that, uh, the, the uh, praying or receiving the burden that leads to travail. It was interesting that Brian talked a lot about that burden because that's exactly what the where the message will end up is with a call for us to receive the burden of the Lord. It's, it's, the, uh, it's not that we try to facilitate a manifestation of tra travail, but we're trying to engage with the burden of the Lord. We're trying to feel what God's feeling. We're trying to encounter what God's feeling about His church, what He's feeling about the times and the seasons. And out of that will come manifestations, travail being what we'll be talking about today. Uh, and that'll be one of the manifestations that come out of that. But the burden is the key thing, connecting with the burden of the Lord. And however that leads us, when we really have that burden within us, then it has to come out somehow. Uh, and it can come out in what we call travail and in and, and other ways, but it'll certainly come out in fervency and many times with travail. Travail is a very specific but very important aspect of releasing that burden that the Lord will put uh, into our hearts. So anyway, let's let's talk about that. Let's go uh, first to, uh, I want to read uh, Revelation uh, chapter 12, of just a, two or three verses there, and then we want to go over to uh, uh, 1 Samuel. I want to talk about travail to, to birth the man-child. You know, we're talking about the overcomers. We've been talking about that being an expression of the man-child. So let's just read from Revelation chapter 12, starting with verse 1. Uh, and a great sign appeared in heaven, and a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. And then verse 2 is what I want you to see. And she was with child, and she cried out, being in labor. And, and the King James says she was in travail and pain to give birth. So she wasn't just pregnant with the child. She was actually in the uh, time of labor, the time where she was travailing to birth the child. And then in verse 5 we see, And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who was to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Now, you know, we've studied this. Brian had an excellent teaching in, in his overcomers class about the man-child and about the birth of the man-child and the characteristics of the man-child. And the, the overcomer and the man-child are essentially the same. The one who fully overcomes will be the man-child. Um, and that man-child in the end times will have a very unique function. Uh, ultimately, in Revelation chapter 12, as it talks about here, is it, it's the, it's the man-child in partnership with Jesus 
uh, as that full body of those of overcomers come forth, and you could call it the bride, you can call it overcoming sons, and it's all the different dimensions of the same group of people, as those people arise, uh, paralleling with golden altar incense being offered before the throne, as it says in Revelation chapter 8, is you have the mixture of those two things. The, the, the church overcoming, or at least a remnant within the church overcoming, and that remnant praying uh, fervently and boldly uh, a golden altar type of prayer that ascends to that golden altar. Ultimately, there'll be a day when that, that, those two activities in partnership with the sovereignty of God, the timing of God, will activate the casting down of the dragon down from the second heaven down to the earth, which will initiate the three and a half years of the tribulation, the last three and a half years of the tribulation, and ultimately return in the call chosen and faithful, coming back with Jesus to uh, defeat the Antichrist and then initiate the millennial kingdom and the ages to come. So it's frightening in one way, uh, but it's exciting in another way. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, I'm not, when you read about what happens when the Antichrist comes, you kind of get a little bit of fright and frightened about it. But when you think, I can be an overcomer and I can be used in partnership with Jesus to not only in, endure these things that are coming, but actually help activate them through my lifestyle of overcoming and my prayer, I, I think I get excited about it. And, you know, I don't, I don't really, I may change my mind, but I, right now I don't want a pre tribulation rapture. Can I hear an amen on that? <laughs> I want to be here. Why would we want to be out of the way in the, in the most exciting time of all of history? I want to be, I want to be uh, used in that point in time. And I know you do too. Uh, and prayer uh, is a critical element of that. Golden altar prayer and travail is a, is a cr critical part because the woman who is a picture of the end time church in this in our application of it the woman has to birth the man child uh, and the Lord spoke to me really really clearly when I was writing our uh, prayer implementation guide summoned to the golden altar which will be the next uh, one of the next thing one of the two of the next things that we'll be studying in our discipleship groups uh, I, the Lord spoke to me really really clearly and said you will not birth the man-child without travailing prayer, without prayer for that. Fervent prayer, but more than just fervent prayer, travailing prayer. Uh, it's a critical dimension. Uh, you, you know, I, I, we've had, we have been having some great discipleship group. We had ours uh, on this past Friday, and it was really, really uh, good. We talked about the church at Thyatira and all the need to overcome Jezebel. We had really one of our better uh, and maybe even the best of one of, of all of our home group, our discipleship groups as we met uh, here. Uh, so those are important, those are good, but we must accompany it, accompany it with fervent golden altar prayer uh, and included in that would be fervency, burden of the Lord that leads to travail. Uh, so let's, uh, with that, let's, let's go over to 1 Samuel Let's look, I want us to look at 1 Samuel. This first chapter is a great picture of where the church is today, where the world is today, and, and God's solution. You know, I mean, when we talk about uh, God, the way God solves a problem, it's interesting that he always births something. Uh, you, you know, I mean, our way is to go back and try to recreate something. If we just get back to the book of Acts everything will be all right. If we just become Jewish and messianic in all of our activities, everything will be okay. If we just do this or we do that. But we, we're, we have this tendency to try to recreate uh, old things and resurrect old things. But God's into new things. He's into conception and, and into birth. Uh, you know, when the, the Hebrew nation was in slavery, what was the solution? To birth a baby. He birthed Moses. Uh, you know, at the time of Jesus, what was his solution? To birth a baby, to birth Jesus. Same with Samuel during the time of the judges when the priesthood was uh, corrupt. What was his solution? 
to birth a baby, to birth Samuel, who transitioned the, the nation of Israel from the time of the judges to the time of the, of the monarchy, to uh, Saul, but then ultimately to David. And I'm not going to read all of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, but it's a beautiful picture. You've got Elkanah, uh, who is a, a, a husband, uh, and he has two wives. Uh, you know, one is named Pinyana and one is named uh, Hannah. And I'm sure I'm not pronouncing these right. But Pinyana, she had all the children. Everything was great for Pinyana. Uh, she, she had all the favor. Uh, but there was a corrupt priesthood there led by Eli and his sons who were corrupt. But Pinyana was real comfortable with the corruption that was going on in the church. She thought, okay, everything is okay. Everything is good. Uh, with, with all of that. She had all the children. She had everything that she needed. But Hannah was different. Hannah was, was barren. Uh, Hannah had no children, and she was being provoked by her rival, the other wife, who had irritated her because the, the Lord had, 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 had closed her womb. And so you begin to see in, in verse 7, and it happened year after year, as often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she would provoke her so that she, being Hannah, this she, wept and would not eat. She fasted and she cried out and travailed. And then Elkanah, her husband, tried to comfort her. But then in verse 10, And she greatly distressed, prayed to the Lord, and she wept bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, If you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant, and remember me and not forget the maidservant, but will give the maidservant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and a razor shall not come upon his head. Now, if you read in the King James and some of the other translations in verse 11, it says, If you'll give me a man-child, I will dedicate him to the Lord. Samuel, the word Samuel, the name Samuel is one with the, with the name or the character of God, one who has the character of God. So you see the beautiful picture here is Hannah, Hannah who was in travail, who was so burdened because there was barrenness in the land, and it was more than just her own personal barrenness. She saw the barrenness in the church and in the people of God. Her other rival wife, the other part of the church symbolically, was very comfortable with what was going on and she was barren, but she was burdened, and she was crying out. And what did God do? God birthed Samuel through her. Samuel, a picture of the man-child. In fact, it says that in the King James. One who has the name and the character of God. Uh, and that's where we are in the church today. That's where we are. We, we, uh, the church, the world is in a mess. The church is in a mess. The priesthood is much like Eli, uh, old, and, uh, old and fat. Uh, it says of Eli, uh, the son, the, the, the offspring of what's being produced by the Eli priesthood uh, is, is corrupt, as his two sons were. And the glory, as it says in Samuel, uh, was departing. The glorious departed already has departed from the church in America, so certainly uh, from the church. Now, what's God's solution? It's not to go back to something old. It's not to go back to, to, uh, to something else. It's to birth something. And now in our generation, it's to birth the man-child, the overcoming warrior, bride, the overcoming mature sons. That's what the Lord wants to do. He wants to birth uh, that ministry in the earth today. And what's it going to take? It's going to take Hannah's. It's going to take a group of Hannah's. It's going to take a group of women of Revelation chapter 12. But women are men and women, and Hannah's are men as well as the women. It's going to take a group, a company of men and women who are determined to see the, the state of the church changed in this day and not to let it be, not to be content with the state of the, of the Eli type of priesthood and all of the de, uh, defilement and all of the issues, it's going to take a group of people who will say, I, I have a burden from the Lord. I cannot live this way. I cannot live with the church in the state it's in. The burden to come and just overwhelm us so much that we've got to weep and lament and mourn and cry out until something is birthed differently until a Samuel is birthed, until a man-child is birthed, until an overcoming people are birthed. 
And that's what God wants to use us in. He wants to use us uh, as a people through our golden altar prayer ministries and uh, even our, as we come together corporately on Sundays and other, not necessarily every Sunday, but as we come together in those times and seasons, he wants us to, to uh, allow him to use us in a birthing mode to birth God's solution for the problems that this country and this nation and this world face. And he's chosen us. There's, no, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that he has chosen, like Brian said earlier a few minutes ago, there's no doubt in my mind that he has chosen us in this way to be used this way. It's critical. It's critical. Everything that we've been doing uh, has been great. Uh, you know, Brian was talking about life school. He was talking about uh, the, that we started this week, probably about almost 700 new pastors are in the process of being released. And so that's exciting, and that's, that's great. But it will not accomplish everything that God wants it to do unless we begin to combine it with uh, intercession, fervent intercession, that will ascend to the golden altar recorded in Revelation chapter 8, specifically around the concept of, of uh, standing against the, the things of the enemy, like we talked about last week with the spirit of Nimrod, but also to birth the man-child and another, uh, other different dimensions around that. Uh, one of the things that's in my heart, uh, one of the dreams that I have uh, in my heart is to start mission bases, uh, here being one of those mission bases, but other places as well, Mish apostolic type mission bases, in time, mission bases, and one of the features of those mission bases would be golden altar prayer centers. End time bases with, with a golden altar prayer center where those people in those other places are crying out and travailing for the birth of the man child, for the birth of the bride, the coming forth of the bride in the end times. And we're going to do it. And uh, you, we're going to start with the 40 or so mentors that we have in life school in Africa. And, and my dream is to see God raise up uh, as a part of this, this, these mission bases 40 golden altar prayer centers in addition to what we have here uh, to cry out in travail to birth uh, the man-child, to birth the overcoming church, to birth the bride, all different dimensions of saying the same things. And I, I'm convinced that it'll not happen without uh, travail. Well, you know, we've been on a journey. This is not just because Terry was here two or three weeks ago and talked to us about it. I want you to make sure we understand that. This has been a journey that we have been on. I mean, I remember uh, about two Christmases ago, 2014, um, uh, for, I don't remember, I, somebody, other people were preaching for a couple of weeks. I didn't have to prepare a message. And I really had in my heart to study the man-child, study Revelation chapter 12. I wanted to know for myself, because I know Noel had been teaching it for years, and, you know, Terry had been teaching some of the concepts. I didn't know at that time that he taught it with clarity the way that we are, but, um, but he does. But I didn't know that at the time. And I, but I wanted to learn it myself. And I... And I, so I spent a couple of weeks, uh, you know, it was Christmas with John the Baptist, I guess, you know, and I, I, I spent a couple of weeks studying the man-child. And who, it, my, my objective was to study who is the man-child. Because if you read most of the commentaries, most of them will say that Jesus is the man-child. Uh, and I wanted, to, I, I wanted to see for myself who is the man-child. And I came to the conclusion that the man-child was the overcoming church. And I came to it through a study of the scriptures. But then, uh, you know, in our journey toward uh, uh, travail, about that same time, we, we just felt the Lord saying for Donna to start a prayer group. And the, the, prim the initial objective of that group was to pray to birth the man-child. Uh, and then in July of 2015, the angel uh, came into the, when Terry was here, and he came and gave us a summons to the golden altar, which is all part of the same thing. And, and then as we began these things, we, we began to have a little bit of travail to come forth. Donna's group began to move somewhat uh, in uh, travail. Um, I wrote a session in the prayer guide the Golden Altar Prayer Guide on Summon to the Golden Altar about travailing to birth 
uh, overcomers and the need for travail. And, and then the one only time I've ever travailed, I really want it more. I really want to move in travail. I would love to, ha to be used that way more and more, but I've only had it ha come on me once. I mean, you can't really just manufacture it. Uh, otherwise, if you do, it's in the flesh. You don't want that. Uh, but when we were in Kenya, uh, it was, it came on me and at the leaders meeting and it was a powerful, powerful thing because it, 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 it broke something, it burst something, it changed something that I believe will be changed uh, forever uh, because of that in, with life school. Uh, and so we did that and then, and then uh, Terry and Donna Bennett, when they came this past year, they shared their history uh, in it and they've been uh, doing it, you allowing, Travail has been in their ministry now, they said for about three years or three and a half years or so. Uh, so not a long period of time. Uh, and they were sharing some of the good, bad, and the ugly about it. Uh, and they said, here's what Terry said, and I think it's probably a good way of describing it. He said, it's something that starts out as an ugly duckling, but it eventually it'll turn in if you facilitate it welcome it and administer it, it'll turn in to a beautiful swan. Uh, and so that's what we want. Uh, we want to welcome the ugly duckling that is travail uh, and then but let it turn into the beautiful swan. Uh, and you know, w one of the things that I I've seen that, you know, when travail begins to come into a group, it's like, okay, what in the world? Have you, anybody ever feel this way? What in the world is going on? What in the world is happening? Uh, you know, uh, and you think, okay, something unusual is taking place. I remember when, when uh, that happened in Kenya, you could have heard a pin drop other than me crying in the ring. And Ishmael, our leader there, he was trying to get up and, you know, say something to, to kind of end it. But, you know, we knew the Lord didn't want to do that. And it was like nobody knew what to do, what to say. And so we feel like, we do feel that way. But the, the point I want to make by saying that is when you start looking at the scriptures, it's th it is throughout the scriptures. You know, the only reason it seems out there for some of us is because of the state of the church. Not because of its presence in the scriptures, and so let's look at some. Let's look at some of these scriptures. Um, before I do that, though, let me one more. Let me just uh, share again. I did this earlier in an earlier message, but Therese had an encounter with the Lord in uh, in one of our our Wednesday night prayer groups on, on May 18th, and and uh, you can read it in your notes. I won't read it, but. In the encounter, an angel came into our prayer meeting uh, and released a released a, a birthing basket, and it dropped into the middle of our prayer meeting. And the birthing basket did not have a baby in it, but she she felt like what the Lord was saying was that it was a basket of tools that we that God was giving to us to birth. Uh, to birth the things that we need to birth in the end times. And you can look at it. And so uh, we just really believe it, it is the time. But anyway, let's look at some of the scriptures of, of travail. Now, Jesus, first, Jesus travailed. You know, the, the classic one, and, I, and you, these are in your notes. I'm not going to try to read every one of the scriptures. But uh, Jesus travailed. And, you know, the classic one is the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, as he was getting ready to go to the cross, and then you know some of his disciples went with him, and he he went a stone's throw away, so not too far away from them, and he was praying, and uh, they were sleeping. Some of them were sleeping, uh, and he was praying uh, because he was getting ready to die, getting ready to not only die but to, the sins of the world to be uh, uh, to be put upon him, and he knew that, and he cried out and said, "God." Uh, you know, if this can pass, let it pass. But, <clears throat> but not my will, but yours be done. And then, you know, he was in travail of his soul when he was saying this. I mean, so much so, as it says uh, in Luke, that he uh, 
when he was doing this that he began to sweat blood. The fervency was so intense. The pressure was so intense. The cry, the burden of what he was having to go through and what was taking place was so strong that he, that he had to uh, just, it, it, it was so much pressure that it even caused him to, to sweat blood. And so, so Jesus travailed there. In, but that's not the only time he travailed. With the situation with Lazarus, when he raised Lazarus from the dead. You know, Mary had come to him and said, you know, Jesus, if you'd just been there, if you'd just been here when my father died, he wouldn't have died. And so she was weeping and crying. And, and all those that came with her, they were weeping and crying. And what does it say? It, it says that, that they, Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping. And look, look what it says. And he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. Troubled in his spirit. And then even they said, and Jesus said, where have you put him? And said, again, groaning himself, he came to the tomb. And so Jesus was travailing over Lazarus to raise him from, from the dead. So there, Jesus was travailing there. And even on the cross, you know, the King James talks about the travail of his soul. Uh, because of that, uh, they should, he shall be satisfied because he, his death on the cross provided justification for, for all, of us, uh, all of us and all of mankind as he bore our iniquity. So Jesus, first Jesus travailed. Uh, but you, you see it all through the scriptures. Daniel, uh, he, he moved in travail uh, as well. You know, verse, chapter 7, verse 15. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit within my body. Uh, in Daniel chapter 10, verse 2. I, Daniel, had been mourning for three entire weeks, mourning for three entire weeks. Now, it wasn't, his mourning was grieving and burdened for the state of where Israel was as they were in Babylon and in captivity. And, the, and they saw, he saw the promises of the scriptures that they were to come out of that. But there was a, an overwhelming burden of the Lord and a grief of the Lord on Daniel to cry out, to intercede, to pray that they would come out of the captivity. And they, and they did. They eventually came back and, and a remnant went back uh, into the land. So we saw, we see it with Daniel. You know, Hannah, we've already talked about, uh, talked about her, uh, about Hannah was, was, was weeping and grieving and travailing. Uh, over and, and as she did that, then things changed and Samuel was born. Uh, we see uh, also in Jeremiah 31, Matthew 2, uh, 18, we see about uh, Rachel. Uh, now these are prophet it's a prophetic picture of Rachel, but lam with lamentation and bitter weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. She was a crying out, a travailing. Of them, so we see that uh, you know prophetically there through Rachel, but then we see it also in the New Testament too. Uh, you know, here's what Paul wrote uh, in Galatians chapter four, verse nineteen. Uh, Paul wrote about how he travailed for the church. He said, "My little very brief verse, but really powerful. My little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. I travail. Paul travailed." for Christ to be formed in others. Now, that's what we're to do. We're to, to travail to Christ is formed in us and in our church and in uh, the, the, the body of Christ and in the world. We're to travail to that until Christ is formed in fullness, not just in seed form, but in fullness. We're to travail to that. Now. But not only did we see examples of Jesus and the Old Testament saints and New Testament and Paul and others travailing, this is what I want you to hear next. God, Jesus called the church to travail. And this one, I just saw this verse not just recently. There was there is a call to this type of fervent prayer burden uh, of travail. Let's go to. I want you to read this one. Let's go over to John. Uh, chapter 6 no John chapter 16 excuse me John 16 verse 20 
John 16, verse 20. Truly, truly, this is Jesus giving direction to his disciples as he was getting ready to go to the cross. Truly, truly, I say to you uh, that you will weep and you will lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned to joy. Now, he puts it in the context of travail of a woman in labor. Whenever a woman is in travail, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she gives birth to the child, she remembers the anguish no more for joy that a child has been born into the world. Therefore, you too now have sorrow, but I will see you again and your heart will rejoice and no one will take your joy away. And then, you know, you could go on and there's more you could draw from that. But the point I want to make is that Jesus is saying to his disciples, you, you know, there's a, there will be a time for you to travail with the burden of the Lord on you, there will be a time when you are to travail. In fact, even in the, even in the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said what? Blessed are those who mourn, uh, for they shall be comforted. Uh, and so, you know, the mourning is not just mourning over somebody who's died, uh, and it's, it's mourning over sin is mourning but it's not only, only just mourning over our own sin it's mourning over the sin in our own life but it's the mourning over the sin in the world it's taking on the burden the burden of the lord to mourn to cry out with fervency and to wail if if the lord so leads that way and to to see things change in the world and blessed are those who do that because those are ones that'll be comforted amen amen Amen. Okay. Now let's let's try to define travail here, and th this is in your notes. If you, uh, it's on Roman numeral two point four. Some of these running in that area, that area. This is just some notes that I got from some other people and uh, some stuff that I wrote. But travail is a spiritual response. Listen, listen to this. Travail is a spiritual response to a deep prayer burdened, burden initiated by the Holy Spirit that manifests in uncontrollable weeping, wailing, pain like in childbirth, moaning, groaning, expressions of grief and sorrow or similar type of manifestations. So travail is the response, it's the manifest, outward manifestation that comes from the deep prayer burden within as we as we become in union with God in terms of picking up what his burden is, whatever his burden is, what we, when we pick that up and we become united with his burden, then many times these types of things can come forth. Next point. Travail is a manifestation orchestrated by the Holy Spirit to express and release the Lord's burden over a situation. Travail begins with a burden given to us by the Lord that grows and builds up so that it uh, can, cannot, can be contained within us no longer and it must be released. In essence, travailing prayer is when we weep and cry over something the Holy Spirit is grieved about. It takes, a, it takes place when we experience the burden and the grief of the Lord over a situation and allow the Holy Spirit to express His burden through us in prayer. Travail is yielding to the sorrow of God's heart over a situation so as to partner with him to see the solution come. So, you know, similar, different way of saying a similar type of thing. Jim, Call, Jim Gall, who's a, a you know, pretty well-known intercessor, defines travail this way. As it is in the natural, this is really good too, uh, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Travail is a form of intense intercession given by the Holy Spirit whereby an individual or a group is gripped by something that grips God's heart. The individual or group labors with him for an opening in a spiritual way, way like during labor, the birth canal is opened so that the baby can be born to be, to be created so that the new life uh, can come forth. Now, here, th this is, I think, a good way of describing it. You know, I feel a little bit like that, uh, that girl in Gone with the Wind who was saying to Miss Scarlett, 
I don't know nothing about birthing them babies, you know, she said that, but, and I, I don't know other than, uh, you know, you rub your wife's back, it's gonna be okay, you know. Uh, and so, but what happens in the natural is what happens through travail in the spirit. You know, as a woman goes into labor, the birth canal opens so that the baby can be born. It, it happens right at the end, you know. I mean, sometimes it's a number of hours, but it happens at the end of a, of a nine-month uh, period of time. The travail of, of labor, of birth, comes, and that, that comes when the birth canal is opening and the baby is coming through the birth canal to be born. Now, that's the purpose that's the purpose of, uh, of travail in the spirit. It's something that, you know, you, you're birthing something. You, it, it's, to, it's, a, it's a work of God that brings something uh, new into the earth. It brings breakthrough and it brings birthing. It'll break through something that has been hindered maybe for years and years. Uh, and, and it'll bring it into a new level or it will burst something entirely new. Uh, and so it's something that opens the birth canal and it, and it actually causes the birth uh, to take place. Now let's go to one more scripture verse, Romans chapter 8. As much as anything, I, I want to make travail something normal. You know, something that we see as normal. Um, let's see where, let me see where to start. Okay, yeah, start with verse 22. Romans 8, verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groans and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. The whole world, all creation is travailing. And not only this, but we ourselves, having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, we groan within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body. For in hope we've been saved, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does only also hope for what he sees? Let me just go to verse 26. And in the same way, talking about travail and talking about birthing and all of those things, in the same way the Spirit helps our weaknesses for, for we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us, how? With groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And then that familiar verse, and we know that, all, that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Now, you know, we've used that verse about speaking in tongues a lot, about groanings, but it's not really about speaking in tongues. It's about travail. It's about groaning that, you know, the Holy Spirit within us in that time and that he, he, he begins to travail within us and how is that that is released, uh, that's released through us in whatever manifestation uh, that might uh, take place. Uh, and so, you know, the scriptures are just, just filled with it, filled with that type, that level of fervent intercession. Now, we're not trying to make crying to come forth. We're not trying to make groaning or moaning or, you know, yelling out in pain come forth. Those are manifestations. What we're trying to do is pick up the burden of the Lord in fullness and as we pick up the burden of the Lord in fullness and begin to voice in prayer his fullness then different kind of manifestations will may or may not take place the key thing is to pray with burden but a lot of times there will be deep powerful uncontrolled uh, manifestations we'll talk more about that uh, next next week but Travail is the, is the final step in the birthing process, to birth something through prayer. Um, I want to, let's just, at the very, uh, toward the end of the notes there, there's four steps 
uh, of, of a birthing, uh, something in the spirit. First, there's a, there, there's a realization of the barrenness or a deep desire for a solution to, to a problem to come. There's, you know, we're not going to travail if we don't really realize there's something wrong. You, you know, we, we'll take the, the idea of the church. It can be for a number of things, but we're to call to, to travail over the, to birth the overcoming church more than anything. I think that's our call and other issues related to that. But it starts with us having a burden for that. You know, if we're like uh, Elkanah's other wife and everything's fine, you know, like some of the TV preachers, yeah, everything's just good. You know, God is good. He's good. Uh, he's good. He's always in a good mood. God's this, you know. Uh, well, he's not always in a good mood, and I don't think he's really in a good mood right now for, as a big in a lot, he's, 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 li he's a lion like we sang about this morning, but I think a lot of his lionness. Uh, attitude is directed toward the church. He's roaring first at the church and he's saying, get your act together. But if we don't have a burden to see that, then we're not going to ever travail. So it starts with that burden. It begins with the burden. And then there's a conception of the solution that comes from an intimate relationship with Jesus. In this phase, God gives the promise of the solution to which you're called. Then from there, there's a nurture, nurturing of the promise as we carry the baby deep within our heart over, you know, in a natural thing for nine months. You know, you're not in labor. Thankfully, you're not in labor the whole nine, nine months, uh, but you're carrying the baby. But then there's, a, there's labor or travail that bursts God's solution to a problem or, 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 the, or barrenness in the land. Now, let's just think for a minute about Elijah just for a minute. You know, the, he came on the scene. The, uh, the northern kingdom of Israel had gotten into a real mess with Ahab and Jezebel. Uh, they, were, they had deteriorated uh, horribly and moved so far away from the things of God. God's solution was to send Elijah. Now, uh, Elijah, Elijah comes and he declares... The, the word of the Lord that there's going to be a drought, there's going to be barrenness in the land. Uh, and, and so that happens and that lasts three and a half years. Now Elijah leaves during those three and a half years and he goes by the brook Cherith and then he goes to Zarephath, he goes to some different places. But what is he doing? He is, he's not just sitting there, uh, you know, fishing at the side of the creek. He is praying. He's laboring in prayer uh, for Ahab and Jezebel to release the people for God to turn the nation back to him. Uh, but And then it kind of, God says, okay, it's time. And there's more, a lot more to it, but it comes, it's time to go back. So he goes back, he confronts, the, he confronts the prophets of Baal, he defeats the prophets of Baal, they all are killed, uh, you, know, you know, the people turn their hearts back to God. And you would think that would be the end of it, wouldn't you? But you know the story. The rain still didn't come. And so Elijah has to go up on the mountain and he has to pray. But it, you notice that he gets in a kind of a kneeling position to do that. And he has to pray seven times. He has to pray through until the rain comes. Now that position that he was in it's the birthing, or there was in that day the birthing position, the way that, that women gave birth uh, in that point, in that time in history. And so, what was he doing? He was at the end. He was travailing in labor to birth the rain to come back into the land. Now, it didn't that wasn't the whole process, but the rain didn't come until the travail came, until he labored in prayer until he prayed through it that way seven times, that number seven being a number of completion. And so it, it, until, he, uh, until he prayed through and labored and travailed, then the rain came. Uh, and so travail is a critical 
it's a critical dimension of what we as a forerunner ministry are called to do. We must welcome travail into our prayer groups, into our golden altar prayer groups. We have four right now. Uh, we, have to, we must welcome that into them and, and, and want it. Uh, like Brian said, I would love it if everybody in, the, in, in our whole fellowship was a part of one of the groups. We need to welcome it there. And we need to welcome it uh, into when, a, when it's the anointing of the Lord on our, on our corporate service or when we have special prayer times or whatever might happen, we need to welcome it then. You know, one of the verses I'm going to use next week is from Ecclesiastes. There's a time to mourn and there's a time to dance. There's a time to celebrate. So, you know, our, when we gather together on, on a Sunday morning, it's not always a time to, to travail. Only when, you know, when the Lord leads. But there are times when we will travail on Sunday morning. We need to welcome all that to do it. But we, but we need to welcome it uh, into our own life, into our own midst, into our own hearts because it's a critical dimension of what God is wanting to do. Uh, in this day, like Donna said when she was praying, Terry had said this, that it's a sign that we're in the end times, that God is re reintroducing on a widespread basis the whole issue and topic of travail. Uh, and so we want to welcome it. But it, it'll only come in a, in, a, in a real, true way when we have the burden of the Lord for the state of the nation, for the state of the world, for the state of the church. It's a mess. And we need a burden that connects us with the burden that the Lord has for where we are right now. And we want to just ask the Lord to do that. And... Uh, I'm, I'm, what I would, uh, Drew and Bethany, if y'all could come up, or Drew, one of you come up, and let's play. And I, we want to pray to, uh, and, you know, allow the Lord to release travail if he wants to do that. Uh, but we want to pray for the burden. And, uh, and Jerry, you're going to go get the, or Angie, can we, can we get the, I'd love to have the kids workers if we can get that. So Jerry's going to go get them to, to do that. We'll wait till they get here is uh, get them to rush as quick as I can Jerry thank you Lord thank you yeah yeah the kids can come in yeah just uh, let's just kind of make sure that my grandkids don't come up and give me a hug I love them to give me a hug but not in the middle of this probably not right but other than that yeah let's let the kids come in it, it won't bother anything kind of wait on the Lord while we're waiting for the children's workers and the kids to come in.
those that just came in, the workers and the children, we're, we're praying for the, the burden of the Lord to, to be released in a greater measure in this house and in our lives individually and collectively. The burden of the Lord for the state of the church in America, but globally. The burden of the Lord for the state of the world, for the state of this nation. Because as we talked about in the message that we'll not travail, we'll not pray fervently unless we first have the burden, the true burden of the Lord released upon us. And so we want to just ask the Lord to, to come. Even this morning as we were praying, and I just sensed that that portal, that open portal that uh, Terry spoke about, the open door that Noel prophesied over here, the portal with the ladder, the angels to ascend and descend, that as we prayed these things, that God would come with angels and he would move, they would move among us to touch us uh, and to release the burden of the Lord. And, and feel the freedom. If you feel, if, if travail comes over you or burden uh, to feel the freedom to release it. Uh, we want this to be a, an open time for God to do whatever he wants to do. So, Father, we thank you for the call that you placed on this house. We thank you, Father, that you have called us to be a forerunner ministry, to stand, stand in the gap with the compromising church in the world. And, Lord, we know that we're not anywhere near where we need to be, but we, wanna, we want to be used of you in our golden altar prayer times. We want to birth your solution. We want to be a part of birthing your solution in the earth. And we know that labor, travail, is a part of that. And so we say to you, Father, we welcome, we welcome first the burden of the Lord. We pray that you would allow us to pick up the grieving of the Holy Spirit upon the condition of the church and the condition of the world the condition of this nation, that we would pick up the grieving of the Holy Spirit in our hearts and in our lives, the burden of the Lord. And from that, Lord, if you want to release travail, then so do it. But more than anything, what we want this morning is the burden of the Lord to be released. So just receive it. Father, we receive your burden on you. I pray for it for myself, that you would just pour out a deeper burden, that I'll not be able to be comforted with the condition of the church as it is. The church in Africa, the church in America, wherever else you put on my heart, Father, I want, I want an increased sensing of union with your spirit to take up your burden in a greater, greater way. So I ask for it, Lord. I pray for it, Father. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, angels of God. Come and release, touch us to release the work of, from the throne, the voice of, from the throne, the message from the throne upon us. We welcome you, Father. intensify your presence in our midst. Just tell the Lord you want it now. Tell the Lord you want that burden. Tell him we all want it. We all want it.
wonders follow the preaching of the word and we want the the sign and the wonder of a true imparted burden into our heart oh god are walking around the room now and touching our foreheads. We impart a deeper heart and burden to the things of the Lord. Just tell the Lord you want it. You want it. teaching I really want us to pay attention to what he was saying and the points where we need to understand the burden of the Lord and the heart of the Lord and Micah 4 and 10 it said be in pain 
and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. We are the call. We are the intercessor. We are the one that the Lord have called. He said, like a woman in birth pain, for now you shall go forth from the city. You shall dwell in the field, and to Babylon you shall go. And what God is going to do, we're living in Babylon. Georgia is so, so polluted. But God is going to open our eyes. And the see. As he opened our eyes and our heart, he's going to show us all the defilement. I want you to read this when it says, you should dwell in the field, and to Babylon you shall go. We're going up, but we're going in intercession. It said, there you shall be delivered. There the Lord will redeem you from the hand of your enemy. What enemies? What enemy we face? What enemy we have let take over in this very city, in our family even? It said, now also many nations have gathered against you. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Who say, let her be defiled and let her eyes look upon Zion? But they do not know the thoughts of the Lord, nor do they understand his counsel, but yes, we do. For he would gather them like she to the threshing floor. We're going to be on that floor. We're going to be in that burden uh, position. We're going to wail. We're going to lament. We will travail at the burden of the Lord. Rise up on us. It said, Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion. That's our call. And I will make your horn iron. And I will make your hooves bronze. Will consecrate their grain to the Lord, our intercession, the golden altar prayers, and their substance to the Lord of the whole earth. No. Go before the Lord and begin to say, Father God, I become known. I become dull. I become to the just like the world where I'm not sensitive to, to sin. I'm not sensitive to the pain that are being afflicted on innocent people. I'm not sensitive to the loss that the enemy is taking deeper and deeper into captivity. But Father God, we want your heart. Father God, we desire your burden. Only you can do it, O oh Lord. Open up our eyes. Father God, give us that sensitivity. Give us that burden. Give us that love for the lost, Lord. Father God, it only can be birthed in us through you. And here we are, Lord. Here we are. thank you for this day. We thank you for the burden of the Lord that is being released in our midst in a much deeper, greater way, more expanded way. We say, come Lord, do what you want to do. You're welcome in this place. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Okay, let's give the Lord a praise. Amen, amen. Great day, amen. Let me... Uh...